I'd like to spend a few moments talking about drawings and drawing setup in Civil 3D and how important it is to really have not only a, a good process, good standards um, in place, but also uh, good, good CAD procedures. Um, if you take a look at this drawing that I have open currently, it's, um, you can see that I've got a bunch of layout tabs. And this is the way I've, I've been getting a lot of drawings and people have been working in Civil 3D is they put everything in one drawing. This drawing itself is close to 20 megs in size. Um, if we go ahead and look at uh, this right here, you can see it's, it's actually about 18 megs as its file size. If you look at the other drawings um, that I'm showing here in, in uh, my Windows Explorer, you'll see that I've got them broken out into a corridor section, design, EG, and site layout. The largest one being site layout, which after I removed all the data from this projected drawing, I got it down to about 7 megs. And then when I looked at the site layout information, I noticed that there was a lot of, um, I would call it bad, bad CAD, where you had duplicate objects. Um, I was able to reduce it to about 3, 3.5 megs. And I think I can get it down a little bit further with some more work. But again, that's a lot of work to start with. That was the master plan. That was the site layout that was handed to us for this project. And you know, working on a 7 meg drawing that just has CAD endings in it, blocks, no design data, you're starting off really on a bad, uh, you're starting right off on a bad foot right there. So you really want to kind of look at the drawings that you're given, clean them up. Um, this comes down to obviously training and, and everything else, but it's very important that you, you manage file size. Okay, so, so that's really the first thing that is, is very important when you're looking at working with Civil 3D. The next thing that we'll, I'll talk about right now uh, while I have it up here is this directory structure. So we have a, a directory structure, project structure that we've established where we have our project and within that project we have folders and files. So we, we're storing information and we're going to talk about shortcuts, so that shortcut folder is uh, for Civil 3D. We have a folder to store our GIS data. We have a folder to store our aerial imagery. And then we have two these two folders that you see here. One is production drawings and the other is reference drawings. If I look at the production drawings, you'll see that these are actually my sheets. You'll notice that I have a lot of sheets that in this plan set. I've got you know my cover sheet, I've got my cross-section sheets, my plan and profile sheets. But each one of those are individual drawings. And notice the file sizes. Uh, besides the joint detail one, everything else is, is pretty much less than a meg in size. This makes it more manageable for me to actually use these drawings. If we look at the reference drawings, the reference drawings are our, um, our actual design drawings. This is where we do our design, we, we create our data, and then using data shortcuts, we share this information to create our production drawings, data shortcuts and, and our extracts. All right, so it's very important. Um, you'll see that these file sizes, obviously, besides the site layout one, they're all you know roughly around a meg or, or less than a meg. My rule of thumb is to try to keep my files less than five megs if possible. The existing ground surfaces usually are going to be your largest files, so that tells you that this site layout drawing is still too big and I need to clean it up. So I need to spend more time on that, um, but right now it is important to get the design done so we, we move forward. The other folders you see here, I have a survey folder uh, where I'm storing all my survey data, and then I have an XML data folder and a DDO folder. Now these folders can be set up based on your company's standards and, and processes, but it's, it's important to have a good directory structure. It's actually kind of one of my own pet peeves is to really have all this stuff organized. It makes it easy to find and manage all your files. So going back to, to Civil 3D for a second, again, this drawing, you'll see we have a bunch of layout tabs. It makes it very inefficient to work not only on this drawing, but also with other team members. So if I had a counterpart or a colleague that needed to work on maybe the cross sections or maybe work on another detail sheet, they can't do that if I'm in here trying to do design. So by separating your design from your production drawings will be the first step in making um, your, uh, your use of the software more proficient. So I always break out these, these, this design data. So you can see here, this is a, a plan and profile sheet. 
and it only has one tab, and the data that you're seeing here is actually a series of XREFs or uh, data references. So what are data references? Um, they're shortcuts, and if you look in um, over here, I have a, a project path working folder. That's where my data shortcuts are, and what I'm doing is under surfaces, I have a corridor surface and I have an existing ground surface. These are data shortcuts. They're actually path you'll see to a particular drawing. This is the drawing that you're seeing here is actually the, the existing ground drawing. So in this drawing, all that contains in that drawing is the certain my points, my break lines, and my surface, and then I create a reference or a shortcut to that drawing. Then that drawing is pretty much left alone unless I need to edit it or, or modify or, or change it, but I never really get back into that drawing. But what I'm doing is I'm referencing that drawing. So if we actually, let's go out and take a look. I'll open up another drawing here. So in this particular drawing, you'll see this is my existing ground drawing. In my design drawing, you'll see that I actually have, um, just look at the, the window here, I've got my existing ground, I have an alignment, and I have my profile in there. So that design drawing is where I'm doing kind of the bulk of my layout and my design. And then I create a separate drawing for my corridors and sections. So what I have here is, is my existing drawing. That is data referenced into my design drawing where I create my alignments and my profiles. And then I shortcut those. And then in the corridor drawing, I reference the surface, the alignments, uh, and the profiles to build a corridor and section. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of keeping the data in separate drawings. And this makes keeps helps my keeps my drawing small, but still allows me to, to work with them all. And then I you know, basically will reference these drawings into the plan production drawings. Okay, so I'm not going to actually open it. We'll just we'll get out of here. Now, what's nice about this is that this is a plan and profile sheet. This was actually created with the plan production tools. But the reason that you might want to do this is, in this case, you'll see that I have a, um, a proposed centerline profile. If I open up that proposed centerline profile, this is the overall profile. So to actually get this profile to fit on the sheet, I had to go with a larger scale. And this scale happens to be 1 to 3,000. And if I use the data, from, uh, just extra in the design data, the, or the plan and profile from the design drawing, it would be too small. The labels would be you know, too condensed. And if I change it in the design drawing, that would affect my plan and profile sheets. So what I'm doing here is I'm just data referencing the alignments and profile into this drawing. And by doing that, I can change the style. I can label this drawing any way that I want without affecting the design drawing. But the actual design is coming from that design drawing. So if the design changes, this sheet will automatically update. So once I develop and create this sheet and get it laid out the way I want, I don't really ever have to go back to it if my design changes until I'm ready to plot it. Right. So again, we're managing these sheets as individual drawings. And then if I go to the sheet manager, you'll see that I, I'm using the sheet manager tool to really manage my drawing. You notice that I, I went, to, instead of going to file open, I went to the sheet manager and I just double clicked on that particular sheet. So I can have people working on the site plan, I can have people working on the soil samples, the uh, uh, cross sections, the plan profile, whatever, and they're in their drawing and not messing with mine. But then I can also have somebody working on the design, and as they work on the design, it will update these plan profile sheets. So once you establish these, the sheet set and your plan set, you can get you can do this before, after, during. It doesn't really matter, but um, you can have your your plan sets all set up, and then you can concentrate on your design. But your design is in a separate drawing. This gives you better management of your overall project. Okay. So those are the main components, and again, it keeps these files small. So again, I just want to um, really stress the importance of good file management, good standards, good processes, and procedures.